everyone. Good morning. This is Pastor Sisto with This Is Love, welcoming you once again to another episode. We we're just so blessed to have you uh, a part as a part of this fellowship time that we get to have. Uh, I have Pastor Ron Osborne here. He's been pastoring for 30 years at least. Um, he's uh, now in, in evangelizing still. Uh, I still call him my pastor. I still see him that way, but um, it's a blessing to have him on the show, and we've been talking about some different things. Amen? Yeah, and our last subject, the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about drawing into God, pressing into God, and no matter where we're at, in a desert place, and a fertile place, and it's really been exciting. I've really, uh, I've really enjoyed it, and you brought out the asking, and the seeking, and the knocking, and today we're going to take up where we left off about knocking and uh, knocking on the door and God opening the doors for us. So wh why don't you uh, share with us uh, some of your uh, uh, feelings on that, Pastor? Okay. And um, just before I get into that, I just uh, really wanted to quickly let you know that um, feel free to go to our YouTube channel and listen to these again. I mean, they'll continually bless you. God will continually reveal to That's you new right. things. So feel free to go to our YouTube channel. It's Weezer Worship Ch uh, Center, and um, our Facebook is that also. But uh, if for some reason you just would like a recording of this, a, a DVD or a CD, feel free to reach out to us. Our number is on the screen there, 208-549-2677. You could listen to them in your car. Um, we can go ahead and get you that. Uh, the first teaching, we'll just give it to you as a blessing. And if you would like to donate something, praise the Lord. Um, maybe uh, we'll get a set together and offer a suggested donation. But for right now, you can just ask us for that. We will, we will be more than happy to send it to you because we here at the worship center, here at Pastor Ron, we, we just want people to know how to draw into God, especially yeah. in the times that we're in. And so as Pastor Ron said, we were going to start on knocking. And um, the story I have about knocking has to do with the man who wanted God so much. And um, he had asked God just kind of the steps that were taken here. And you don't have to know the steps, by the way. You can just know who God is, and it'll. Um, you can just seek God, and He'll really take you through these steps. I didn't know these steps. I just learned. I learned them afterwards that He walked me through these That's steps. Right. Yeah. But it's good for us to know. So um, knocking, um, it, it's a, a more of an intensity. So asking, you ask God. And then it gets more intense and you start seeking him as you, you seek a treasure and trying to find more about him. And uh, then it comes to a point where you're just knocking. You're just fervently just, God, I need more of you. I need to know more of you. And the story I'm going to tell is of a pastor who wanted to know God so much. And if I mentioned his name, most people would know exactly who I'm talking about. But he was wanting to know God so much, Pastor Ron, that, that he literally told God in a cry. He says, God, if you do not come down here and show me more of yourself, I'm going to go up there and I want to know more about you. And really within a couple of days or weeks, he had so much of God, he thought he was going to die. <laughs> so um, I, I tell that story because we come to a place where we just want more of God. It really absorbs our time. It absorbs our thoughts. And even if we're working or whatever situation we're in, that we can be thinking and wanting more of Him. And um, so the intensity grows and the desire grows for more of Him. Comes to the point where we're just so a hunger rises up within us um, to see that we get to know more about God. And uh, this is a good desire, though. Amen. It isn't a bad desire. He wants us to know more of Him. And we believe that it's a desire every believer has. This isn't for a certain few. It isn't every, every believer, I believe, has that desire to know more about God because it's a God-given desire. And He delights in that desire and not wanting to know more about Him. So... Um, you know, we've been talking about how to practically go in and receive of God. And I, like I said earlier, don't stumble at the simplicity of it um, because it's so simple to ask, seek and find and knock and you will find. 
Um, But we also want to talk to you a little bit about the hindrances, amen, because those can get in the way of our walk with Him. And so what is one of the first hindrances that you want to talk about there, Pastor, that affects our seeking Him? One of the things you've noted is uh, not walking in love. And that's very, very important because operating and walking in love is the position that you're in to seek God. Everything in the spiritual realm operates by love. The spiritual gifts, the release of the Holy Spirit in and through our life, it all is a matter of walking in love with God. And walking in love means practicing in obedience the Word of God in every aspect of our life. If we are in a position of unforgiveness, for example, Pastor, in our life, it's very hard or it may be difficult and impossible to to walk in love, which means we're not operating from the position of desiring more of God or drawing close to God. And as we've stated um, over and over in our teaching, it is the desire of every Christian, no matter how good the place is that you're in to want more of God. So we must, through obedience to the word, which is obedience to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we must make sure that we're operating in love. And to make sure of that is, as you pointed out in our last couple of weeks teaching, is in obedience to the word of God not just what we feel or think is right, but love according to the Word of God. And if we're willing to do that, then we'll find that God is in a position to answer our prayer. It's not that He won't answer it. It's that we're in a position not to receive it without operating, walking in love. And in in, in our walk with Him and seeking Him, I can tell you of many times where I had to come to a place where I had to choose what his word said about it and or or keeping that unforgiveness or whatever it is that was stopping me from walking in love. Um, and I had the choice either to continue to walk in the word and just uh, forgive those regardless of, of what was done to me or regardless of how I was treated. Um, and the good thing is you can come to a place, Pastor, that you just walk in love automatically. You know the word, you know what it says, you know how it hinders, and you don't want that in your life because God is so good. And you just want to continually be receiving from Him and you just automatically forgive. You, you know, somebody could come literally right smack to your face and start screaming and yelling at you and it just wash off your back like water off of a duck's back. Amen. And um, that keeps you walking and, and drawing near to God because remember, he told the disciples, follow me. And he'll lead us to those places. But I want to let you know today that you can overcome those hindrances through the word of God, even doesn't matter how you feel. And even now, pastor, I'll just be a little bit honest. Um, there are times where we can get into places where um, somebody's doing more than you're doing or somebody's experiencing more uh, manifestation of, of different aspects of ministry. Let's just say that. And um, and in our flesh, we can get to a place where where we start getting a little bit irritated or a little bit um, even maybe unconsciously a little bit um, aggravated with it and uh, to to those that 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 war with that i the way that i've learned to kind of overcome that if i see that rising up is i just start blessing them you know i just start i just i'll start giving into their ministry because i am not going to allow the place for the devil to allow me not to walk in love and so I'll just start praying for them, start giving into giving to them. If you're being raised up in a church, you see somebody else who's um, getting raised up or receiving more. Don't don't worry about it. You just start praying for them, 
and you go against your flesh and you start giving in to them and you just start blessing them and walking in love and your emotions in your flesh will come into alignment with that. And that's just so that we can continue to draw into God. And that's why I say that, Pastor Ron. You know, even the scripture bears out that you and I, to walk in love or even to pray for our enemies, Amen. let alone some people that may rub us the wrong way or bring some discouragement into our life or even try to offend us. Walking in love is walking in obedience to uh, the word of God. So not to walk in love then is to disobey the word. And you and I know from the teaching from the word of God that walking in the word is walking in the spirit. Obeying the word of God is walking in the spirit. And walking in the spirit keeps you and I operating in love. Amen. And it keeps us, it puts the flesh aside, doesn't it? That's right. <laughs> That's what the word says. Amen. And so another, another, uh, another, you know, we kind of summed up walking in love there with not obeying the Lord, which we, we kind of talked about already, but also choosing not to forgive, harboring for, um, forgiveness. Right. You know, brothers and sisters, um, my, my pastor here, when he was leaving our church or the transition was, was, was happening and um and i was going into a uh, senior pastor at the worship center i remember some of the foundational things that we were reminded of in pastor ron's teaching and one of them had to do with unforgiveness i'll just tell you how he said it he says if i can leave you with anything in these past 24 years of teaching you showing you and learning uh, about god is one of the foundational things has to do with choosing to forgive. In my time as a Christian pastor, I have seen such destruction of, of people's lives because they choose not to forgive. And it usually doesn't happen in the person that they're not forgiving. It happens in their own life. And it's just such a sad thing to to continue to harbor it, let alone what it does to your life, but it hinders you from being able to continue to walk with God and draw near to Him. And I just encourage everybody right now who's listening within the sound of my voice, listen, there is nothing, doesn't matter what's been done, there's nothing that is worth you keeping that unforgiveness just let it go forgive it and you say well pastor sisto it still affects me in my heart it still affects me and and i understand that but you just give it to god in faith and you say god right. i choose right now to forgive him because i want to know more of you that pain and that unforgiveness is nothing compared to the joy you will receive in letting it go and knowing more of God. So I just encourage you to forgive today, whatever that is. And if you uh, need somebody to agree with you in prayer, feel free to send us a letter and we'll stand with you in that, um, in that uh, request that you're making with us. And another one is, is a big thief of drawing near to God and uh, you we've touched on it about having confidence and and having a I think we even use the scripture already pastor but I'll just read it it's James 1 5 through 7 it says if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask of God who gives to all liberally remember I told you that um, when we ask God he, he isn't stingy he has more than enough to give us and so he gives us liberally without reproach, which means without making us feel unworthy or reminding us of our unworthiness or making us feel bad because he wants us to come absolutely confidently to knowing him. And it will be given to him, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let, not man, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. And I went on to verse 7. But that's definitely a thief 
of us drawing near unto God is by not having faith that God wants us to, to draw near to Him or that He's going to answer us when we ask Him. Amen? That's so very true. That's what, as you classified it, wavering uh, at the promises of God. What we've got to do is we've got to choose to believe the Word of God, act upon the Word of God, apply it to our life, and let it change our feelings. We can't feel right about it before we uh, follow the Word of God. We, we've got to follow the Word of God, and that will bring our feelings into perspective Amen. or proper place. Amen. And uh, the reason why is, once again, it isn't because God doesn't want you to, to not draw near. It's because by wavering and not have or doubting uh, more than we're having faith that it will rot, it will we won't be able to see the manifestation of it and bring it into reality and you know just while we're talking pastor i know that i can ask you this and we could talk about it but you know there might be somebody who says well i can do can i have doubt and faith at the same time well of course we can we know that but faith can overcome even the doubt that we have in, inside of us. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. And uh, so another one at which uh, where we could just touch here, but but we need to ask in faith and believe, and not go by our feelings, not go by our emotions, and uh, realize that uh, that and have faith in the Word of God. And um, what Jesus did is he went to a, he went to a city and he saw a fig tree there and. He spoke to that fig tree and he, he went and came back and they marveled that the fig tree had withered. And he says, listen, whatever you do and ask without doubting and having faith, it will be done for you. And um, I know that some of us have been a little hurt by the over exuberance of faith. And, but I, don't, I encourage you to not let that hinder you in believing God for whatever it is. Listen, I know of people who believed God for healing. I, my wife was bipolar, um, Pastor Nicole, and she was bipolar, and we just believed God for her healing. And um, the doctor, even at that time, said to her that she was going to be bipolar for the rest of her lives. And the way that she put it is, you're going to be on these pills for the rest of her life. And right away inside of us, but because we knew the word of God and we believed it, not because we're better than anybody, we just simply believed the word and he healed her of being bipolar. And we have a great relationship. I mean, I believe personally that we have such one of the best marriages and I, you know, I'm just comparing that to myself and her, but I just believe that because I have such a blessed marriage, but, um, it's all because we had faith and did not waver, Pastor. We just believed God and, and just believed that He could put us in the places that we didn't deserve. And we just believed what His Word said about us. You got anything to add there, Pastor Ron? No, that's so, that's so very, very true. Uh, just, just what you said. And, and if we will allow God to minister the truth Amen. you just now stated to our audience, we would find there would be a lot of healing, a lot of restoration because this drawing near to God and pressing into God, we also need, need to realize that there are hindrances. The enemy will place anything in the way. And as we stay in God's word and believe God's word and choose to act in faith, this will open the door uh, for us. And, uh, you know, one of the next points uh, that you'd placed in uh, your notes, Pastor, was uh, uh, to consume it upon our own lust. Amen. And our desiring God, asking God for like godly prosperity and those types of things, we need to know that we have the right motive there in asking God. It's not so that uh, we can be more well known Amen. or whatever the case may be. We've got to make sure that in our pressing into God that we're not being lustful. We're not doing it for lustful reasons. And again, 
One of the ways we can back that up is by balancing it with the Word of God. Amen. And I think that's so very, very important. Amen, because the Word of God checks our motives, that's doesn't right. it? It, it keeps checks us the motives. balanced. It keeps us balanced. And, um, and that's, that's just absolutely right. Um, and I'll just go ahead and go to the Scripture there. It says in James 4, 2, and 3, it says, You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. And he's very, um, God is very, uh, he, he is absolutely looking at the motives of our heart and why we're asking. And um, we can check our motives or as pastor said, keep it in check or in balance by, by putting it into reflection of the word of God. And that'll help us make sure that we're asking with the right motives. And the last but not least is Matthew 6.33, which we already looked at. I personally, Pastor, I'm, I'm not a smart man and, um, you know, with some who are smart out there. But all I did with the past that I have, Pastor Ron, all I can attribute my whole life to and glory in is, is just this scripture. Is that I just, it says, but seek the first, the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all this will be added to you. If I'm blessed, it's because I've done this or I believe this. If I'm a pastor, it's only because I believe this. And even doing television, pastor, it's only because I seek the kingdom of God first. And, um, and just trust him for everything else. And some people say, well, that's my life verse. And I understand that. I mean... Personally, my, the whole Bible is my life verse. <laughs> um, but this is one that has deeply impacted my life. And just remembering that, you know, regardless of whatever I'm going through, that as long as I seek his kingdom first, that he's going to take care of me and I will get to know more about him. And he can take care of us better than we can take care of ourselves. <laughs> and inclusive in that in seeking the kingdom of God is all the things we've been talking about, yeah. that drawing near to God, that's seeking the kingdom of God. And that's part of him having the avenue to bring blessing into our life and answer those requests. Amen. So very, very important. And I, like you, have tried to make that the foundation of my life as well. And God has blessed me abundantly in so many ways. And and that's the avenue. If we will um, seek the kingdom of God first in our life, all, and all is inclusive, means everything. All these other things will be added into us. It actually brings fullness of life. And Jesus said, uh, the words that I speak into you, uh, they are spirit and they are life. And so God wants us to have a good life. And part of that is by drawing into him. And so I want to encourage you today, those of you within the sound of our voice today, that seeking God is good. Drawing near to God is so very, very important. And it's the avenue for God to bring spiritual prosperity, uh, wholeness, healing, all of those things into our life because he's willing to meet us no matter where we are. So no matter where you're at today, Amen. know that God wants to meet you. And the reason is, is the tremendous price that Jesus Christ paid for you on the cross. Amen, Pastor. Amen. I, I, amen. I just get excited talking about what Jesus has done and how that brings us near to God. And, um, you know, it, it, it is all inclusive. If you need restoration, um, it, it's there. I just seek God. And, uh, and I just want to let everybody know this uh, out there in, in TV land that, you know, you're looking at two pastors here. Who are not just telling you the word to tell you even though that would be enough in itself but you are looking at two men of god who have experienced all the things that we are telling you 
Pastor Ron, he was a man who he saw he he saw God when he was young and he uh he grew up in an evangelist home and he did the ra- he was there when his father would do the radio, the TV thing and out in the hills of Kentucky and um the East Coast and he walked away from from God and he wanted to go taste the world and um he thought that God didn't love him and um, is is that correct? That's Before correct. I tell your story, <laughs> yeah, no, right ahead. No, that's so very, very true. I thought by being raised in a Christian home, knowing God uh, at such an early age in my life, and then by trying to walk away from Him, that He would not want to receive me back. But because of the price that Christ made for you and I. He said, draw near to him, and he would draw near to us. And the Bible teaches we need to do that with clean hands. We, If there's something in our life that we know is out of order Amen. to the will of God, we need to release that and press into God. And he did. He met me. He restored me. And my life has been tremendous Amen. ever since. Amen. And I just say that because I want you to know that it's a reality for us. It's something that we've experienced. I mean, this is truth to us. It right. isn't something we just preach to you. We absolutely, if you ever get to meet us, you'll know that we absolutely mean what we say. And I just want you to trust in the Word of God and our testimony that um, that we believe that God can do this for you regardless of any situation. Listen, if I told you the things that I came out of and how God, the great deliverance God did for me, you, some people don't believe it, but it's the absolute truth. And next week we've got some exciting stuff. We're going to talk about what drawing into God consists of, and we're going to start in the Word of God. So we are out of time, but we are not out of message. We just say a quick prayer that God bless you, that he prosper you, and that he open the windows of blessings upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. May God bless you. Hello, this is Sisto from This Is Love. Just want to thank you once again for tuning in and supporting us. If you'd like to support us financially, we do accept uh, donations which are tax deductible. Go directly to our website at www.weezerworship.org and you can give securely online that way. You can also uh, text on your cell phone 77977 this is love in the subject and you'll be able you'll be prompted and uh, be able to give with the credit or debit card. Um, If you have any questions, feel free to call us, 208-549-2677. Thank you, and may God bless you.